Hey everybody, CCJ Chief Editor Jason Cannon here. I'm here with Patrick Wallace, Marketing Manager with Peterbilt, and our special guest is this Peterbilt right here. Patrick, there's some, something particularly special about this truck because the Cummins logo on the hood is bigger than the Peterbilt logo on the hood. So tell us a little bit about what makes this truck unique. Well, this is a Model 579 and it features Cummins' new X15N engine. And this is the latest and greatest natural gas engine that Cummins has, has released. It's the first engine on their new engine architecture platform. So they're doing a new fuel agnostic platform and it's gonna have hydrogen, diesel, and natural gas. This is the first engine that comes out of that family. And it, it's a great improvement over the ISX 12N. There's a better fuel economy, so about a 10% increase in, in fuel economy over that old engine. It's a great benefit over you know, an X15, it's pretty light. You actually drop 500 pounds over an X15 diesel because you don't have to have as much after treatment here. You don't need any kind of urea injection or anything like that, so that's a good thing. And it also, there's been big improvements with drivability. So this one's paired with an Endurant 12-speed transmission, and there's been specific drivability calibrations really to get you know, the best feeling, the best maneuverability and drivability possible with a natural gas powertrain. Now Patrick had said it was the latest and the greatest natural gas engine, but it's also the biggest. That's so right. So let's pop the hood and take a look at sure. it. Sure. So when you pop the hood, I mean, it's red. It's a Cummins engine. It, it does look a little bit different, but for the most part, it just looks like a big Cummins engine. So Patrick, walk us through. I mean, what makes this special other than you know, some of the plumbing that you can see, obviously, or at least the natural gas? Yeah, and so it's a big block. That's a nice thing, and customers will appreciate that. And this is all new. This is in a whole new design. You can see this is well integrated as well. This has our air filter and everything like that that you'd find on a, on a similar diesel. And I would say it's our best integration yet. It's a very good packaging job to integrate this. This is a fully integrated powertrain. It's definitely not an afterthought. It's, it's something that we want to offer customers. We consider ourselves leaders in natural gas. We offer it in a variety of models. This will also be in our 520 refuse truck and vocational applications as well too. Power numbers, what are we making here? Yeah, so this truck has 400 horsepower, but the great thing about this new X15N is we can go anywhere from 400 to 500 horsepower and up to 1850 torque. So this, this really will get you comparable to a lot of uh, diesel applications. What about the tanks? I mean, that's, that's a yeah. unique configuration there. And, sure. and I realize the more tanks you have, the more you know, range that you can kind of bake in. But what would you consider would be common on a spec like this? We're talking about a day cab, so obviously this truck wouldn't go very far. Yeah, actually this truck does go pretty far. It has a 175 diesel gallon equivalent tank. So it could go, you know, almost 800 miles or something like that. So if you look in our booth here at ACT Expo, we actually have a 579 Ultra Loft, and we want to show that to show customers that now it's an option to go long haul with natural gas because we have the range. What's the ideal natural gas customer? We, we hear a lot about electrification being, you know, limited range. Obviously, you don't have a lot of range limitations with this, but, you know, you, you talk to a lot of people, you know, a lot of customers. What type of fleet and what type of segment do you think this should appeal to? Well, there's, there's definitely a lot of different segments and take advantage of it. You know, Refuse is the obvious one, the early adopters. Those folks were creating their own natural gas, and that was an obvious choice. Companies that have clean fuels and carbon goals, you know, this is a great application for that. They can also, you know, you can look at different fuel contracts and see that sometimes it could be beneficial. If you're in a place with very high diesel costs, take a look at your natural gas and see if, if that's gonna be economical for you too. I know Peterbilt plans to really dig into production on, on these particular units later in the year. So I know you guys have had conversations well in advance with some customers. What are some of the feedback that you're getting? Maybe not the early adopters, but mm -hmm. the people who've expressed some serious interest in this type of technology. Well, they're very grateful, of course, that the expanded range capability of this. Uh, there's also longer service intervals. This will go like 60,000 miles as opposed to 40,000 miles with the, the ISX 12N. Well, it's a nice looking engine. It's awful clean, but let's say me and you hop in there and get it hot. Yeah, let's do it. Well, the most important part is it sounds like a diesel. Yeah.
Patrick, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun because I love to drive and I, I like to drive innovative technologies. This is certainly that. Uh, full disclosure, we don't have a trailer, obviously. We didn't get to go very far. It didn't really get over 10 or 15 miles an hour. So with that said, this truck has a lot of what I would call good drivability. And what I mean by that is you don't really know that this is anything other than a regular Peterbilt with a regular engine in it until you see the tanks behind the cab. It sounds the way it's supposed to sound. It feels the way it's supposed to feel. In the limited experience that I had with this truck, it was very dynamic. It felt like like a Peterbilt is supposed to feel. When you talk about alternative solutions, alternative powertrains, natural gas, electrification, hydrogen, yeah, I think it's important that these alternative solutions don't feel super alternative. And this feels really fundamentally like a truck. And as we look down this path of decarbonization, fleets that are scared with the hydrogen infrastructure or they're scared by the electrification infrastructure, you know, the CNG infrastructure is not substantial, but it's a heck of a lot more mature than the electrification. It's a heck of a lot more mature than hydrogen. And if you're going apples to apples with, you know, fuel, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than hydrogen as well. So this is absolutely a viable solution for fleets that are looking to decarbonize but maybe aren't really ready to take that big leap. This is a pretty aggressive step.